Hello YouTube fans, today I'm going to give you a tour of my Wildwood 171 RBXL. I'm going to give you an honest appraisal of all the good, the bad and the ugly that I found with this camper. I've owned it a year now, I've put about uh, 10,000 kilometers on, on a trip down through the states with it and we had some problems and there were some things that we liked so I'm going to go through them all with you and also some ways to uh, improve your camping experience. First of all, I'd like to say that uh, I looked at probably a thousand YouTube videos uh, before deciding on a camper I was interested in. This one is probably the smallest camper I found that still had a dual axle, two propane tanks in the front, three burner stove, full size fridge, double sink. Uh, these were things we wanted because we're going to do some long trips with it and uh, I don't think you can get much more than that stuffed in this small package. Also has a queen size bed, couch, and a table, dinette. So that's a lot to cram in here. Actually, I'd start by saying, although it's called a 171, it's probably about 19 and a half feet long, the actual camper itself. This one, which is a 2016, weighs 4,100 pounds, I believe. It's up there, so a little more than uh, It'll sometimes say 3,800 for this camper, but uh, loaded as this one is, it's 4,100 pounds anyways. So let's start at the front of the camper. It has a diamond plate. It does have an electric tongue jack, which is nice. It does have a metal front that's nice and curved and aerodynamic. This camper is wider than uh, some of the campers out there by probably half a foot or so, so it does create a bit more wind drag when being towed. I have changed the dual propane tanks so that it is direct to one line, so that my other tank I'm using for my portable barbecue, which I set up here and run a line to. So that's just a little something to save me having to bring another propane tank or bring little throwaway disposable cylinders. So this is kind of a nice setup for us. If the main tank to the camper does run out, we can always switch that line over to this one until we can fill up a tank, which hasn't been a problem. This camper does have a bumper on the back, which we needed because we do put a ramp here for our motorcycle that uh, we pull a motorcycle in the back of the truck and we need a place to put the ramp and this is a perfect setup for it. It comes with a spare tire on the back. We have actually moved the spare tire into a storage compartment. So as you see, we've managed to stuff the spare tire in the storage compartment up here. This is the, the pass-through storage compartment at the front, which is actually under the couch. And I wish the doors were actually bigger. They're quite height-wise, not very high, so it's a little tricky to stuff some things in there. But you can get your camp chairs and whatnot in there. This camper does have a, a handy back storage area. The hot water tank is down in here, but... There's also a lot of storage space down in there. I've moved this one floorboard so you can see. I've stored all my cleaning supplies and a little tool kit in there. And we put all our barbecue stuff in here and moonlights and other things like that. So that's actually quite handy. The power awning is quite small, actually. I, it could be actually another two or three feet wider at the one end. And the one thing I don't like is you can't open the door more than this far because it will hit the awning. We have put little protectors there so the door doesn't smash against the awning arm if we forget to hook it up to the bracket here or if the wind swings it open. But that's something I wish could have been designed differently. I believe the new models have a different step system. This one has a single step and it's quite a drop both down to the step and then down to the ground. So the camper ends up shaking even with the stabilizer jacks when you're getting in and out of the camper. So I have purchased a double step. It hasn't arrived yet, but as soon as I get it, I'm definitely putting it on. Out here I've mounted a solar powered motion detecting light that will come on when you come near the camper, which is kind of handy. And I just used extremely strong Velcro for this so I can take it off when I'm traveling. I have left it on while I'm traveling and it didn't fly off but probably best to bring it in if you're gonna mount one of them. We did have an issue with our back electric stabilizer jack only one week into our trip. It wasn't working anymore. It does have a rubber boot on it. This rubber boot does not seal as 
well as you'd like. As you see now, I've duct taped it all. I took all this off, I took the whole motor apart. I had to clean everything out, it was full of rusty water. I sealed the part, the motor, better before I put the rubber boot back on. And then I did it to the front one as well, so that I wouldn't have an issue there. I would suggest when you first get these campers, you take this rubber thing off, which really isn't doing much anyways to stop salt and water and whatnot from getting in there, and seal that electric motor up better, and then push all this back on and seal that, or you will have trouble down the road. There is uh, an LED light strip under this camper. Uh, you can see by the tape here, I had to rip all that open because the connector, one of those quick connectors, just came undone about a week into our trip. So I was able to just manually do it the old fashioned way and wire it back together. I've taped as much as I can here and I went around the whole camper and found more spots where they didn't tape the uh, under belly well and we did have mice Three days into our trip, we already started getting mice come in the camper. So I've sealed everything off better and we haven't had any mice since. So you might want to crawl under the, your camper when you get it and, and tape up everything better than it comes from the factory. As I already mentioned, it does have a dual axle. This camper pulls really nice. Uh, we don't get much of a bouncing effect from just having a single axle. Um, over about 75 miles an hour, we, we did get some swaying in certain conditions such as following a transport truck so they I'm, they don't recommend you go over those speeds anyway so we didn't really have uh, an issue unless we were really pushing it over that speed all right welcome to the interior of the wildwood 171 rbxl we've uh, customized it a bit to make it better for our needs we really like the layout of this camper because it does give you a nice size dinette four people can squish in and eat there of course it folds down into a bed as i mentioned we do have a three burner stove in this camper which we wanted it does have the glass top which is nice it gives you more counter space i believe the new versions do come with a cover for the sink I made this cover myself because it didn't have one and I did want more counter space. Again, the double sink is nice. It also has this little extension, which we put our drying rack for the dishes on when we're washing dishes or the toaster or coffee maker when we're hooked up to power. It does have uh, lots of storage. The microwave is 900 watt. It is small, it's very quiet and being 900 watt, it's, it has no problem heating up your food fast. I see here, just notice one of these screws is coming out. These are things we did tighten a lot of this camper up after we did those 10,000 kilometers on it. Uh, it's a lot of bouncing around for a camper. Again, it has a full-size fridge, which is nice in a camper this size. We don't have the oven, which was fine for us. It gives us lots of room to store pots and pans. And where is the bed. This is a Murphy bed system. We love it. Um, it folds up and down very fast. We've made some modifications. One, we took the uh, these cushions. I put some Velcro tape on them. It helps hold the cushions in place. When you're ready to turn this into a bed, you can just store in these huge closets, as you see. Fold down the bed, the couch rather and turn this into an instant bed. And again, this just folds up and it's out of the way. We added some little night lights on the side. Just stick on night lights because when you want to get out of bed in the middle of the night, you really can't find a light switch. And we have a map showing some of the places that we've been. When it's time to travel, you can just put this up quickly. You do have under the seat storage here which is accessible as well from the outside. They do suggest you travel with the bed in the downwards position. Um, we've traveled with it both down and up. It has locking latches. We've never had a problem with anything breaking or letting go so far. I'll go over some of the things we've done to make this camper a little more suitable for us. We've added a spice rack which I didn't realize was so hard to find nowadays but uh, this one's pretty sturdy and it stops the spices from bouncing out. We've never had anything fall out of there on our trip. 
Again, I added the sink countertop cover. We've added little hooks, of course, to hang things on. I did take out this drawer was on the top and it only had three dividers for storing things. So I put it, I moved it from the top down to the bottom and took this piece of wood that was here out so we could store longer things in there. And then the bottom one, which had nothing in it, we bought a utensil holder. So we found that more useful. Here is the only spot in the camper I could find to mount a paper towel holder safely, not too close to the stove. There's storage under the dinette seats. We've added little Tupperware things so that stuff is easy to get out from under there and things don't rattle around. As for the table, they also suggest when you're traveling that you keep it in a downward position and the legs don't rock and get loose over time. Uh, we did have the legs just lying down there on the floor and, and they rolled around and have marred the corners so I suggest you put the legs inside uh, one of the dinette under the dinette cushion instead of just letting them rattle around like we did and start scuffing up the finish. For the front door we've added a keychain very handy. We also put a hook here to hang coats on when you come in the door. I also added an indoor outdoor thermometer so I can see what's going on temperature wise. The radio radio works well indoor outdoor speakers however we haven't been able to use the USB to power and run anything. Um, if you hook up your iPod to it the unit says that it's loading and loading but you can never play music that way. It does work through Bluetooth however no problem so I put a little doodad here so I could mount my iPod up there because there's really no other place to put it and it keeps it out of the way and then you can play music all day long but the USB is not working as intended for either an iPod or even just a flash drive with music on it with mp3 uh, we can't get it to play any music I put lots of little protectors all around the camper so when doors swing open, they're not bashing onto the actual things and marring the finish. I put the little door stop here. So when this bathroom door is open, the fridge door isn't getting smashed. I also put a little floor protector there on the door handle. So when the fridge swings open, again, it's not marring the fridge door in any way. As for the fridge itself, it does not show a way to adjust the fridge here. When we started using it, um, we noticed it wasn't keeping things very cold. There is actually, when you look inside there, an adjuster which is just like a temperature probe and the higher you lift it up, the colder it will make the fridge. And we have it as maxed out as we can and then, yes, the fridge started keeping things nice and cold. Our fire extinguisher was mounted by the front door. It was kind of in the way. I didn't like it there, so I found this little corner by the couch to stuff it down into. This camper has a very large bathroom because we stayed at very nice state parks. We actually didn't use it for showering or for the washroom, so it was mostly storage and just for brushing teeth and whatnot. Um, some things we didn't hear. Yes, we had a little hook here again. Um, the cupboards here, I wouldn't suggest putting a lot of weight on it. They are just stapled on the sides here. I put, uh, actually I put a thing of bottled water on one and we went for a drive and this shelf broke. It fell right down inside. There's not a lot of support on these. I rebuilt the shelf, but really clothes and lighter objects only. I wouldn't overdo it with canned goods or anything too heavy. It does have a nice large storage area behind the toilet. We put in these, I actually have these screwed right into the, the floor there so that we can store all our clothes in there. It makes the space much more useful on a big trip. We still have some room to hang things and store some blankets. Now another thing we noticed on our trip is that we started getting water on the floor in here 
and it turns out that where the taps are connected underneath it's just a hand tightening bolt kind of thing and they weren't very hand tight so I was able to turn them all another half turn almost all of them were leaking after a week the one at the toilet here you can see the design that one was actually cross threaded so I took it off and put it on the proper way and tightened it same with uh, under the kitchen sink those taps are also leaking in here after about a week again they just are hand tight and they need to be tightened more so I suggest you go in there and make sure those are as tight as you can tighten them by hand so that you don't have water everywhere like we started having this camper has lots of remotes to impress your friends uh, this one here controls the outside lights under the awning you can have any color under the sun or under the rainbow with this thing flashing bright whatever kind of mood you want this remote will do it and this remote here is simply to work the radio controls it does have a cd player built in this remote here uh, will turn on the outside lights as well you just can't change the colors with it it will also make your stabilizer jacks go up and down as well so you could pretty much sit in your truck and set set the camper up stabilizers down lights on and your your awning in and out as well from that one remote there uh, one of the things i do wish this camper had was a window in the door this part of the camper is actually quite dark it does have the window there but it would be nice to either have another window near where my coat is hanging up or at least a window in the door because it's actually fairly dark when the door is closed so just a review about the camper so far we're very happy with it the things that have we have had problems with we could have either had covered under warranty or again i, I was just able to fix it myself um we do like this murphy bed system uh it only takes about 30 seconds to set it up as a bed so it's not a big issue you can keep all your blankets and pillows on as well so you don't have to store them somewhere else and then when you're ready to go you just fold the thing up and you have a couch again so it's saving you about nine feet of bedroom space and it's a great couples camper like I said for the size of the camper and the amount of stuff they've crammed in here it's really hard to beat